Hi there, Simon from simonwooter.com. I have five Syrah stroke off you, stroke Shiraz wines in front of me. Actually, some of them are 100% and some of them have got uh, other grapes in the blend, but um, let's just dig in and see where we end up. First one just says Syrah on the label, uh, 2010 Maison Nicolas Perrin. Now, the Nicolas bit is uh, Nicolas Javolet uh, from the famous Javolet family, and the Perrin bit um, is from the famous Perrin family who own uh, Chateau de Beaucastel. And I think they're, they're together now and hopefully making beautiful music with their wines. Um, it's uh, it's funny because the the Javelet bit they're famous from the, for for the Northern Rhone and Perrin's from the Southern Rhone. Uh, on the back it says Vin de France, uh, so it could be Syrah from anywhere in France. On the front it says Valle du Rhone Nord. What can it be? Let's just stick our noses in or my nose and yours by association and see where we get. Well, this smells like juicy, young, fresh, wonderful, vibrant, tigger-like, bouncy, unoaked syrup. Why cock it up with oak when you've got such lovely, bouncy, vibrant fruit? I mean, they're talking up the 2010 vintage in the Rhone, and this smells like it's going to be terrific. I may be wrong. Oh, it's got that lovely, fresh, fragrant edge of syrup. Um, and um, some people think of a syrup, syrup as being a full-bodied wine. In the Northern Rhone, it's a genuinely medium-bodied wine. OK, it can get into a uh, quite hefty in Hermitage and uh, Hermitage and uh, Cornas and places like that. But if you get to good Crow's Hermitage and the lighter end of Coat Roti and here, it's uh, that lovely savoury juiciness. And uh, I could drink an awful lot of that uh, and probably eat rather too many sausages with it as a result. We like that. Still in France. But um, uh, at the uh, Spanish end of the Mediterranean coast, Chateau d'Angles in a La Clap. Uh, so La Clap is a big rock that sticks out um, uh, in the sea uh, at the uh, where Roussillon, uh, well, Roussillon becomes longer dock, if you want to call it that. This is Classic 2008 Syrah Grenache Mourvedre, uh, made by a guy who used to make wines at uh, Lafitte. Two years older, different grapes, different uh, terroir, different climate, and uh, I suppose climate's part of terroir. Um, but uh, here you're getting more of that, uh, the, the uh, slightly raisiny edge. Uh, if you imagine something like Fitu, you, you know you get that uh, slight fruitcake raisiny edge there. Uh, here you're getting that. The maturity is uh, softened the, the bounciness of the fruit flavours, but it still feels like it's got it's got quite a lot of vibrancy, quite a lot of body and freshness, and so it's going to worry, worry, or is it certainly they're not going to be a light wine feels like there's going to be uh, yeah some uh, pleasure it's not going to try and assault you it's try it's going to try and ever so slightly caress you or so i hope a different beast i mean that's more of a winter warmer if the uh, uh, if the the perrin nicolas perrin is it's almost a wine that you could chill ever so slightly in summer uh, here's one that uh, has got st i want stew written all over it so it's a heartier, uh, beefier wine. Uh, is it a finer wine? It's just, uh, no, it, it, it's, it's a different wine. And uh, it, it, it's, it, it's not really very sensible to, uh, uh, to try and uh, say one is better than the other. They, they're for different occasions. So uh, um, whereas the, uh, the, the Perrin one, yes, I, I'd want that with a pile of charcuterie and, uh, and stuff like that. This one, yeah, I'd want my beurre en daube and stuff like that. And uh, uh, yeah, my, my uh, bit of cassoulet. And a little bit of brown sugar going on in there too. Tasty. Okay, now we are heading to New World. Uh, we've got three wines, we've got two Aussies, um, uh, and uh, but they flank and South African. But we'll start with the Aussie. The Comeback Kid. 2008 McLaren Vale Shiraz Cabernet Merlot. Why is it called The Comeback Kid? Inspired by the resurgence in popularity of this great Australian blend, as well as the never say die attitude of a Western movie star. Is that just hype on the back on the back label, or does it live up to its billing? Well, let's have a see. It's the sort of wine that made Australia famous. It's got that slightly leathery, uh, old-fashioned, old-fashioned in the nice sense of the word, plummy, savoury, tomato-like edge. Uh, there's a bit of leather in there. Uh, and uh, the, the strange thing is, the, the Syrah and the, well, the Shiraz is giving this beefiness, and then there's, there's the Cabernet and the Merlot giving a little bit of um, a freshness to it. It smells like it's not going to be a very complex wine, but it's going to be a very satisfying wine. And it's a gentle, hearty giant. Bit of licorice, a uh, bit of um, that, uh, that sort of chocolatey, leathery type of uh, American oak character. It's, um, 
It is subtle that it is not, but honest, hearty and juicy. Um, personally, it's a style that I've, I, 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 I want a little bit more freshness in my wines, but I know, I know lots of people, if I put these two wines, like the, the, the freshness of the Nicolas Perrin next to the warm heartedness of this, just as many people would like one as the other. So um, I, 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 in, in, if I were to be an impartial scorer, I'd probably give them about the same marks. Personally, I would head for the Perron, the Nicolas Perron one, but here uh, there is an uh, there is a real warm heart that I, I really like. And I like the idea of wines like that coming back because they're the sort of wines that we fell in love with uh, uh, for, for a reason. And the reason is honest, down, a good, downhearted juiciness. And uh, um, it's it, 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 a lot of bang for your buck there. Hey, let's move on. Uh, the first chapter. Oh, golly, there's an essay on the front of here. I'm, I'm muff going about muffled firecrackers. Maybe we won't uh, read it all out now. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, see if I can zoom in and uh, or pr I'll, I'll direct you to a website where you can read all about it. But it's the first chapter, Shiraz Viognier, 2010, a wine made by Nico Vermoulen uh, in the Western Cape in South Africa. I won't read it, but I will taste it for you. I'm always a bit wary when I see Shiraz Viognier blends from warm places. I mean, the, the, the idea of the blend originated in the Northern Rhone, and it was to uh, compensate for the slight underripeness of the Shiraz in some years. Add a little bit of the peachy Viognier, it, was, uh, it became a little bit more uh, user-friendly. If you're in a warm place, your Shiraz is always ri is ripe enough anyway, so you don't need the extra the extra oomph, uh, and they can just get a little bit too blobby. But here, um, it doesn't feel like the Viognier is um, is too blobby. Um, and I personally, I, I, I would, if, unless I'd seen that it was there on the uh, label, I, I can't I can't get any of those uh, aromatic apricot and peach smells. Uh, what I do get is a little bit of that South African bake, that uh, that 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 sl just slight burnt uh, smoky edge, uh, which. It slightly disturbs me, but it does feel like there's, there's still some freshness here. Let's give it a taste. There's that meatiness. Um, there's um, a little bit of the Viognier does poke in there, giving this peachy edge. But it is still that smokiness that, uh, that disturbs me about the wine and that dominates me. There's an ashy feeling that uh, I'm left with in my mouth that makes me think I really don't want to drink too much more of that and I don't want to uh, taste that remaining bit. Sorry, um, the first chapter doesn't make me want to move on to the second chapter, let's just say that. Uh, let's see whether how we get on with the big Mo. 2009 Barossa Valley Shiraz. Uh, momentum, the impetus gained by a moving object. Another of those that's got uh, uh, an essay on. So... Uh, I might point you to where you can find it, and uh, depending how charitable I feel and how good the wine is, but it's from the Barossa, and um, let's give it a whirl. Rich, warm berries. Uh, there's a slight bit of mintiness there, that mint eucalyptus. Um, it feels, yeah, it feels like a hearty wine. Uh, I almost prefer the heartiness that I found in the uh, in the Comeback Kid. Here, it's almost a bit more one-dimensional. Uh, maybe the, it's missing the Cabernet and Merlot to fill in a few of the gaps, but um, it's okay from the smell. But um, let's see what it tastes like. Just a little bit too much confected. Uh, creamy vanilla there. Um, uh, yeah, I, I can't remember the last time. My, my, my wife drank Tia Maria. I don't, but there's something what I call the Tia Maria character there. That uh, slightly boiled vanilla uh, mixed with a bit of brown sugar. Um, and uh, I, it's not a, a flavour I'm, I'm, I'm fond of in a wine. Um, so it's okay. I, the Comeback Kid is, is, is quite a lot more, uh, a, a more interesting wine. This will have an audience but uh, the audience isn't me. Uh, it's okay, but my favourites were, I mean, I, I, the, the Perrin and the Comeback Kid and the uh, Anglais. I mean, those three were, those three were pretty good. And I think it'll be a toss-up between uh, which I drink with my uh, birth on Doob uh, when I get round to making it, which will probably be tomorrow at this rate. Hey, see you soon.